This is how I animate it all in Photoshop. Number one, have Photoshop. Either Craig or actually buying it is fine too. Number two, have a drawing tablet. Otherwise, if you're shy, you can also just use a mouse. Number three, download a plugin. Now, this may turn a lot of people off because a plugin sounds very troublesome to install. However, what's more troublesome is trying to animate in Photoshop without a plugin. Photoshop is a jack of all trade s kind of software, so it is not focused on being able to be an animation software. Thus, it doesn't have make a frame, duplicate a frame, onion skinning button that very accessible. You have to manually do it or click this, click that to be able to access animation features. And it's not very convenient. However, this plugin make it to where you can have a shortcut on adding a frame or duplicating a frame, onion skinning, all those super helpful buttons that will be able to help you with animation a lot better. So I really suggest downloading this plugin. In order to be able to install the plugin, you have to go to this link. I will also put it in the description. The plugin is called Animedison. When you get into the site, click the green button and then click download zip to be able to download it into your computer. After you download it, open the file and make sure to take the folder inside the file and drag it out of the zip folder into an actual normal folder in your computer. And then open the folder. In the readme, it will say that you have to install Anatolizy Program 2. This will be in the link in the description too. This is where you install the software that will be able to install plugin into your Photoshop. After you get to the site, download the software. And when you open the software, there will be different Adobe program that you have in your computer. Choose Photoshop and then drag the two plugin file into the extension panel. After that, it will install the plugin into the software. When you go back to Photoshop and click on Window, Extensions, you will see the plugin that you have in your Photoshop now, which is Anid Colors and Anidescent. When you click onto one of the plugins, you have successfully managed to make Photoshop an easier animation software now. And here is all the step on the screen. I will leave it on for two seconds. So now I'll explain what the button on the plugin can do. The very first button will help you be able to open the timeline panel. The next button is making a new canvas for animation. The moment you press it, it will ask you what frame rate do you want for your animation. Usually 2D animation is around 24 frames per second. If you don't like the size that they gave out, which is 1920 times 1080, then you can change it by using the next button, which can change the size of the canvas. The next button is the save button, so make sure to hit it very often or else you might lose 5 hours of work like I did. Here comes the super important button, which is making new frame button. As you can see, when I hit the button, it created a new frame and here I write number 1. And when I hit the button again, it created another frame. And here I write number 2. But it doesn't end at that because I hit the button once again. And how I write number 3. Now if you hit the play button, which is right over there, it will play all of your frame. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. A bit too fast though. So I, there is a way to slow down the pace. When you hold on the corner of the frame, you can actually drag it out and set out how long you want that one frame to be. This button is the onion skin button and it's helped a lot in seeing the frame before and after. The frame before and after will be in a lower opacity. You can see both. The button next to the onion skin button can help you set how much frame you want to see before and how much frame you want to see after the frame that you are currently in. You will be hearing the word frame a lot. And the those are the important buttons in the Anibit Descent. As you have most likely noticed, there is also another tab for Anin Color. Anin Color is more focused into adding colors into the animation. The first button on this tab is a button to create a special frame layer. This is a strange one where when you write something on the first frame, even though it appears to be a single frame, when you move the cursor, each and every single frame will be a different frame. You do not have to use this, however, it is an option. It does help to where there is less layers for you to manage and everything is compressed into this one layer. This button, which looks like a paintbrush, is a paintbrush button. However, when you press it, it turns your brush size into one pixel. 
Now the purpose of this is more to not cause strange blur lines. However, I personally don't use this very much because it's hard to see with one pixel brushes. The next button is a magic wand button. This button selects things that is within the object or the object itself. It's like a bucket tool but for selecting. The next one is plus one and minus one now this is basically expanding the lasso area and then there's the fill button right next to it all of that is a lot of step and tools to use so there is a shortcut to do all that automatically which is the button afterward it's going to take what you have selected expand it by one and fill the area and go to the next frame the next button say plus two over there so it's gonna expand by two instead of expand by just one the button next to it is a bucket well this is pretty much the usual bucket tool where you just fill things in however the reason i don't use the bucket tool very often is because as you can see when you fill in the circle usually it's gonna leave out this empty space between the line and the actual fill it doesn't look very good and i don't tend to use the fill bucket i tend to use the magic wand more now these other two button is basically the same as the first button where it creates a color frame however this one automatically clip mask into the layer that you're currently in the one with the moon symbol will automatically name itself shadow layer the one with the sun symbol will automatically name itself light layers now if you don't know what clip mask is it's basically a layer that will only fill in whatever is underneath the layer that it clipped to the next one is a duplicate button but for the color frame only so if you have the color frame you notice how the next layer just become something different so if you use the duplicate button whatever is inside that color frame will be duplicate to the next frame too the next one is to remove the frame so if you press it the frame that you maybe accidentally duplicate will now disappear this button will duplicate the frame and select whatever object is inside of the frame the two remaining buttons basically is a transform button the first one is a simple transform button where you can select the whole layer and move them around the second button is a more complicated transform button where when you select you can wrap at the more specific points of things and make it a more stranger shape and those are all the buttons that are in the plugin now i will show you this hand animation that i made and show that <laughs> it's possible to make animation here so what I did at first is I sketched down the hand motion and time it out correctly. Afterward, I draw over the hand again and make it a bit more detailed. But then I thought that was still hard for me to make a clear line art. So I did it again and make it more precise this time. And then I finally did the line art. <laughs> I made a different layer group and added the shadow line in with the blue and even added the nails and stuff And then I added in the colors and then the shadow and then <laughs> the nail colors And with that the hand animation is done I will also tell you how to export this animation in the Photoshop There is a share button on the bottom left If you press it, a render video panel gonna appear You can name your file Select the folder that you want to render your animation to In this button there is is Adobe Media Encoder and Photoshop Image Sequence. If you choose Adobe Media Encoder, it will automatically render your animation as a video. However, if you choose Photoshop Image Sequence, it will render out each and every one of your frame individually as a picture. Most of the time, I use Photoshop Image Sequence because it allows me to choose my format as PNG. And when I choose my format as PNG, I can import it into After Effects later on and make to where my animation layer is transparent. And then I can place it in front of like a background or a prop or something and then compose them later on. When you choose as a Photoshop image sequence, be sure to check that you're in the right format. I usually go with PNG and make sure you're in the right frame rate. Also, when you are exporting as a PNG or as individual pictures, make sure to change your alpha channel in the render option to straight slash unmatted or else it will not be transparent and then press the layer button. Afterward, all of your animation gonna be rendered to the location that you place your file in. Additionally, I tried drawing a character on behind the hand and see if I can make the whole scene. And from that, this is the animation that I managed to make all within Photoshop. And with that, thank you so much for watching this video. The reason I made this video is because I myself got assigned to make an animation in Photoshop 
for my university work and I myself don't really want to animate in Photoshop because it's not a software made for animation there is a lot of buttons that is missing <laughs> and there isn't much tutorial online on how to animate on Photoshop so I figured out that because there's not much out there, I might as well increase the amount of Photoshop animation tutorials online <laughs> in case there's someone that was struggling like me. I say if you want to animate, I recommend Clip Studio Paint instead of Photoshop because Clip Studio Paint is more made for animation in comparison to Photoshop, which I think I said in the beginning of the video that it's more of a jack of all trades software. But other than that, uh, thank you so much for watching in this video and have a good day!